trying. Kind of. No, absolutely not. They're all on my team. <laughs> hey, guys, on the move. Four, three, two, one. And these are our friends! Yay! Woo! Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Great, let's start down here. My name's Noah. Hi, I'm Aisha. I'm Kira. I'm Cade. Yay, friends! Hooray! It's always fun when Ricky and I get to do a challenge. But it's even more fun when we get to do it with friends! Especially with this game called Lost Art. Ooh. Yeah, is it like Pictionary? Very similar, but with a twist. All the clues are familiar groups, but with something missing. Okay, so it'd be like if the clue was the Four Seasons, but without the summer. Exactly, and to get a correct answer, you have to get your team to yell out not what you're drawing, but what's missing. But can I just draw what's missing? Like, if can I just draw summer and let them guess that? No, that's against the rules. Okay, can I use letters or numbers? No, also against the rules. No letters or numbers. Okay, do you want your team to go first? I'd love to. Yay, we don't know who, who this team is yet, but we're looking forward to it. Okay, you're gonna have a minute to get your team to guess what's missing. Let's play Lost Art! Yay, Lost Art! Yay! 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 Yeah! Okay. You got it, I believe in you. <laughs> okay, okay, Let's go. That. Strings. Okay. All right, so that's a guitar. That's a guitar. Drums are missing. Drums are missing. Everything's missing yeah. except a guitar. Oh, drums? Oh, yes, yeah. it was drums. Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> Good job, guys. Noise. Yes. Noise. Good job. Nice. All right, Cade, you want to go first for All our right, team? Let's do this. Yay, Cade. You can do it. Okay. Three to six. Okay. He's got it. Yeah, All he's right. confident. He's got it. Yes. All right. We've got a circle. <laughs> Got a little, a little circle. circle. A medium-sized circle. There's planets? Oh, so penny. a quarter, Dime, nickel, a penny. Quarter, a penny. Is a nickel missing? Yes! Yes! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Great job! Yay! Oh, He's really good. High five. All right. <laughs> now, imagine if we were playing this game and everyone was checked out. Okay, guys, are you watching? Are you watching? Guys, guys. Guys, hello. Hey, hey, what do you think? I think that maybe this would give it away. Rain clouds. I told you the answer. I gave you the answer. It wouldn't be much fun. We'd all be missing out. Question, are you missing out on events that are around you? Have you ever found yourself trying to escape life by tapping into mindless activities? Like, have you ever found yourself scrolling and lost track of time? Here's what I know, that where you focus your attention has the power to guide how you love people. So what are you looking at? What are you feeding your mind and your heart? And see, resting is not bad. It actually gives your brain space for when you're tired. But there's a difference between resting and just running away from your reality. But technology actually isn't bad. Devices are a tool that you can use to actually help you unwind. But when that screen time becomes unhealthy distractions, that's where you cross the line from mindful action to mindless escape. Here's what I want us to remember. We need to set limits so that we can show up and show love. Unlimited screen time can be dangerous. It steals us away from full life. You miss out. And limits actually helps you control your attention. And by putting down your screen, by putting down those distractions in your life, you're saying to everyone around you that you love them. Why? Because you're giving them your undivided attention. You're being fully present with that person. And see, as followers of Jesus, loving people is something you do. And honestly, one of the best ways to show that love is to simply show up. And as you set these limits and you show up, be mindful to be present to those who are around you. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Think about the things you think about. Finally, Sisters, think about such things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Whatever is true and noble. Whatever is right and pure. Whatever 
whatever is lovely and admirable, whatever is excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Finally, brothers and sisters, think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Oh, oh, you got it, Kira. Let's see. What are you guys seeing? Presents. Star. Is that the, what's missing? It's a Christmas tree. Oh. Uh, uh, Easter, Easter egg. Is it a jack-o'-lantern? Oh. Is that what's missing? So Christmas, Easter. A turkey? Is it a turkey that's missing? Thanks. Kira. Arbor Day. Arbor Day is missing. <laughs> Arbor Day is missing. Uh, what is that? <laughs> it's a tree holiday. All right, so we have Christmas, okay, Easter, okay, okay. Thank pumpkin you. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is yeah. missing. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yay, great job, Kira. And nice. Who's next? Aisha. Right. Got it. Come on. You yeah. got it, Aisha. And we got this, Kate. Yeah, no problem. Kate and Jamie. You Let's got it. You, you got it. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! All right, come on. All right. It's a book. TV. Door. Tower. Building. Oh, it's a card. Oh, so uh, is, is the Ace of Diamonds missing? Is the uh, the Queen of Spades, Ace of Hearts, uh, Ace of Twos? Oh, this is gonna take me a long time. <laughs> Ace of Twos. Uh, Ace of Twos. Um, <laughs> wait. Um. Oh. Uh, the, oh, the Jack. Okay. The Jack of Hearts. Mm -mm. Jack of all trades. That's not a card. Oh. Oh, you can't. Uh, uh, wait. You uh, can't uh, yeah. A J is a letter. Okay, oh, I mean, Queen of Hearts, do we need to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a uh, letters. Oh. I even said that rule and I forgot it. Wow. Yeah. Good job, Aisha. It's all right. Yay. You did really well. <laughs> do you guys ever do a digital detox? Yeah, what helps you all take breaks? Reading is good. Nice. Like just, just a plain paper book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes whenever I notice myself being on my phone a lot, I like to chuck my phone across the room so I don't have to look <laughs> at it and actually Aww. focus on the work that I have to do. Yeah, I'll usually turn my phone off, take a walk outside, pet the dog, something like that. Oh, cool. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Awesome. Outside. Yeah, I have days where um, I basically forbid myself from like getting on YouTube and it makes for a lot of time for me to do things like read. Uh, I like reading and running. Nice. Yeah. For some more helpful tips, check out this tiny book. Big stuff, tiny book. That's not it. Um, okay, no. <laughs> what? <sighs> really? Ah, there it is. The Loop Show presents Big Stuff, Tiny Book. Let's talk about setting screen time limits. Technology can deliver entertainment and provide some relief from stress. But what can you do to make sure that a screen doesn't steal your attention from moments that matter? Is the time you spend with screens mindful or mindless? Here are some warning signs that technology has too much of your time. You're missing out on good sleep, good exercise, non-screen hobbies like music or sports, quality time with family or friends, loving God and loving others. If any of those things are missing, it's time for some limits. Why do we need good limits? Setting screen time limits isn't just about time management or good posture, although that's important. Take good care of your spine, you're going to need it. Limits remind you to take a break and reconnect with what's real. Limits help you spend your time well. Like it says in Psalm 119.37, turn my eyes away from things that are worthless. Keep me alive as you have promised. Setting limits protects you from wasting time on worthless things. And you don't have to wait for someone else to set limits for you. If you wanna be mindful about where your time is going, here are some great places to start. Timers are your friend. Setting a timer makes you mindful of how much time you're actually giving to technology. You're in control. It helps you say, I'm only going to play this game for 30 minutes and then I'm going to do something else. Keep a list of something else you can do. Having a list of non-screen activities like reading or spending time with a pet will help you know what to do when you don't know what to do. Brainstorm a bunch of ideas. 
set up device-free zones. Decide on some spaces where your devices are not allowed, like the dinner table or your bedroom, and make exceptions for connection. If your tech helps you spend more time with God or chatting with family members through video, that's worth a pass. Just don't forget that screen time is only one of the many tools that can help you interact with God and friends. Oh, bonus tip, get your blood pumping. Studies show it's smart to get active right after you finish with screen time. So get up and reconnect your brain to your body by going outside or exercising. Technology is neat, but here's what you gain when you set screen time limits. You grow more curiosity, more creativity, and more connection with God and with others. Now we're gonna go head to head to see which team can figure it out first. Okay, let's see what our prompt is. Oh wow. boy. Okay. Okay. We got it. All it's right, fine. are you Come ready? On, Jamie. As ready as I'm gonna be. Come on, Ricky. Uh, you got it, Ricky. <laughs> Wait, you. you got this. Oh, thank come on, Ricky. You. Come on. Um, come that's on. A circle. Is that a circle? What is that? Cookie. That's supposed to be a sun. Circle. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, a plate, Summer. a fork, oh, and a fork, knife. Oh, knife. Mm -hmm. spoon. You're missing, missing a spoon. Mm -hmm. You're missing napkins. Fork, Sing. spoon, sun, um, daytime. Okay. A basket. A picnic is food. missing. Uh, a basket uh, is missing. Uh, People are missing. People are missing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that a platter? It's time. That's a, a clock. clock. Oh, your dessert. Um, you're missing dessert. You're missing dessert. You're missing dessert. No. Okay. No. No dessert. Noon. Okay. Dessert. Dinner time. Uh, dessert. Lunch is time. missing. Food. Brunch. Um, breakfast. Um, breakfast is missing. Breakfast. Is lunch. Is missing. Yes, breakfast. 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 Who's missing? Don't skip breakfast. Most important meal of the day. Well, I thought it was dessert because there's, there's like an appetizer of salad and then there's like that the chicken salad, as isn't an it? entree. That is a this salad. is a three course meal. I'm yeah. so sorry for yeah. the confusion. <laughs> but we have clocks. But so. dessert, dessert is salad. also important and too. Oh my good gosh, job. thank you. Thank you. Oh. That was good. That, that was, was good. good. That job. was fun. Go was team. Good. Job, team Jamie all the way. <laughs> well done, good everyone. Job. Silence your notifications and turn off your phones. It's time for the quiz thing. Hey. Why haven't we been talking about owls? We're just letting these things fly around all willy-nilly or alley wally and it ruffles my feathers. I spent a lot of time last night going down a rabbit hole of owl facts and I don't like what I found. Which one of these owl facts is false? A, owl flight is silent. B, owls have three eyelids. C, owls don't build nests, they take them. Or D, owls sometimes eat other owls. Which one is it? A, B, C, or D? Guess what? None of those facts are false. They are all true. And this is why we need to be talking about these unnerving birds. People, we can't hear them coming. Silent flight. And they have three eyelids, and get this, they don't have eyeballs, they have eye tubes. Long eyes for spying on you and your family. And they don't spend their time building nests. Huh, they got a lot of free time. They spot your nest with their binocular eyes, silently swoop in, and take what they want. They will eat another owl to survive. I'm gonna say it again, they will eat another owl to survive. Are we just gonna put our heads down and ignore this? Because I think that's what they want. They have three talons facing forward and one going back. You know what else had that? Raptors, raptors had that. Those terrifying, those things, we got them flying around in our barns. And they can turn their heads pretty far back. That's something they can do. It's a myth that they can rotate their heads 360 degrees, that's not true. But they can still go about 270 degrees. That's farther than I can go, that's farther than you can go, and it bothers me. They aren't the only ones that can look backwards like that. Which one of these mammals can twist their head 180 degrees? Is it A, kangaroo, B, wombat, C, tarsier, or D, bat-eared fox? Which one is it? Where are my animal fact lovers? I know you guys like animal facts. If you said B, uh-uh. A wombat, if it turned its head 180 degrees, it's gonna snap its neck. That's science. It's C. Tarsiers can pivot their heads to keep their giant eyeballs on whatever's going on around them. And hey, also, they're venomous. So, what are we doing here? Uh, we got silent cannibal nightmare birds and venomous monsters made of eyeballs. I'm terrified of the outdoors now. It makes me want to stay indoors forever. That's it, shut it all down. I'm tired. Instead of getting good sleep last night, I gave a lot of my attention to learning about animals on my screens. And there's nothing wrong with learning new things, but I, I put all my focus into one place and then when I looked up, a lot of time had passed. Has that ever happened to you? 
time disappeared when you get sucked into something like a screen. It happens to me a lot. Some days my head doesn't turn very much. It's just right here, looking down, giving a screen all of my attention. But it's not just screens that want your attention. God wants your attention too. Your friends and family want your attention. When you're only ever connecting to a device, you miss out. Your head never pivots to see what's going on around you. You miss opportunities to love and conversations that help you grow. As a follower of Jesus, loving people is something that we do. And sometimes the best way to show that love is to look up. Turn from your screen, put it down, and, and choose to be present. When you show up, it tells people that you care. This putting down your device says, I love you enough to look up and give you my undivided attention. I'm going to confess something to you. I'm not great at this. I, I'm really not. And sometimes it feels like I'm not getting any better at it. I, I can be present for a while, and then something dings, and then my eyeballs are just right back right here. And I'm missing out on everything going on around me. But I want to get better at loving people more than myself. I want to love people more than a notification. So I'm working at looking around and seeing who needs me to show up and show love. And if you want to do this too, if you want to join me in this, I'll be praying for you because I know it's not easy, but I think it's something that we can do. Just just imagine what we're going to see when we look up. We're going to see where God is moving. Maybe we're going to see some love that we missed or Maybe we'll see opportunities to really be alive. And I know we're gonna find a better view than what we get just right here because all of this is so much better than anything that's just right here. So let's get a mindful mind and giant eyeballs and a loose neck and look up. Let's pay attention to all the quiet things flying all around us. Let's turn from checking out to checking in. Let's be people who share God's love with our attention. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, boof. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> If cutting back on screen time is proving to be too difficult for you to do on your own, it's time to reach out to a trusted adult for extra help and support. Tell someone that you need help setting some limits and showing up for what matters most. This game night was a success because no one was missing. And we're glad that you joined us, but don't forget to be a part of the life that's happening all around you. It may be time to set some limits. Yeah, so you can show up and show love. Don't miss out. Be where God is moving. Look for places to be present. Have a mindful mind. Focus your attention on where it belongs. And as you think about the things you think about, enjoy the ride!